Hey all you cool cats and kittens, welcome to our week four video one notes. Today we're going to be starting a brand new chapter. We're going to be talking a lot about um, data and variables and we're going to get into some statistics. So this is our first video for week four. We're starting chapter eight and today we're going to be talking about statistical questions and variables as we kind of go through. Um, this first section is going to be a little bit different because we are going to be talking about a lot of definitions today. Uh, we just want to make sure that we know all these different terms that relate to statistics before we actually get into utilizing statistics and um, using it towards experiments or samples or whatever it is that we're going to do. First, we just have to know what each of the terms means. So that's really what we're going to focus on today in this video. Uh, remember, like always, that you can follow along with me. Um, if you have a printer, you can go into the Edmodo assignment and you can print off the notes for today. You'll have the same notes as me. So you can print them off that way, or if it is easier for you, you can also write the definitions in our notes that you do in your notebook. So whatever is easiest for you. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get ourselves started on chapter eight. So the first thing that we're gonna define is just what is a statistical question. So a statistical question is a question that can be answered by collecting many pieces of information and data and then summarizing that data in some way. So you do have to collect, analyze, and then summarize the data in order for it to be a statistical question. So an example of a statistical question would be something like, um, what is, the average um, length um, you travel to school. So this would be, if I ask this to all of my students, what's the average length you travel to school? So if you're telling me, you know, someone only takes 20 minutes, someone takes 30 minutes, I'd have to collect all that data, I'd have to analyze it and figure out what the average length of time is to travel to school. That would be an example of a statistical question. A question that is not a statistical question, an example of one would be something like, how many YouTube videos has Ms. DeMasso created? And the reason that that is not a statistical question is because I would just have to figure out how many videos have I made. I've made about 35 videos. That just has one answer. I'm not collecting data. I'm not analyzing it and try to, come in, try to come up with um, a summary for the data. This one has just one answer to it. So if it has just one answer, it is not consider, considered a statistical question. It needs to have some way for me to collect and then summarize or analyze my data. So we are only going to focus ourselves on statistical questions. So when you ask a statistical question, the first part is going to be your population. So population is the set of all members of a group that you want to know something about. So population is the whole amount of people that I'm talking to for whatever it is my question is about. A sample is a subset of the population. So populations like the umbrella, sample is one little part of the whole umbrella. And that subset is being studied to answer a statistical question about that population. So for example here, my scenario. Um, let's say a school yearbook staff randomly selects 30 students from each grade level at Largo to answer a survey questionnaire. Well, my population would be the group of all people that I'm talking to. So I am talking to all students from each grade level at Largo. So my population would be all of those students at Largo. My sample Okay. Sample is the smaller piece of that larger population. So my sample is the randomly selected 30 students from each grade level. And that pink's not working, so I'm going to change to orange here. So my sample is going to be that group of 30 students that are surveyed. 
Another sample would be the group of just freshmen that were surveyed or the group of sophomores that were surveyed, right? That's a small sample of my larger population. My whole population is all of the students at Largo. So you can think of population really as being like your umbrella. There's my umbrella. Look how good I am at drawing. I'm so good. Okay. Sample is like one little piece of that larger population. Gosh, I should just be an art person. Look how good I am. Does this... Not, oh my God, it's so good, I'm so good. Okay, all right, next part. Statistical variables. So we know that variable is something that is changing. A statistical variable is a quantity or a quality that can be measured or counted and for which data is expected to differ from one observation to another. So there are two really main types of statistical variables that we have. Type one is categorical data or categorical variables, excuse me, and it's data that falls into categories or that indicate a qualitative attribute. So that means something about them. So maybe that's something like, a categorical va variable could be something like, what is your favorite candy? Because that falls into categories and one category could be chocolate. One category could be Skittles. One category could be, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are different categories, and so that's considered a categorical variable. The other type is called a quantitative variable, and I'm sure you can probably figure it out. Quantitative talks about a quantity. So we're talking about a number. So it's numerical data that can be compared, added, subtracted, or operated on in some way. So maybe multiplying, dividing, something of that nature. So that could be something like, how, how many apps, like the number of apps that I have on my phone, right? And I could survey a whole population of all the students at Largo. Or I can say the number of students that are passing math class right now. That is also a quantitative variable because I could go to all of the classes and I could determine how many of them are passing, how many of them aren't. So that would be quantitative variable. It's a number that I'm looking for. Okay, last two parts here, a parameter. So a parameter is something that describes a population. A statistic is something that describes a sample of the population. So remember, populations like my big overall umbrella, parameter describes that big umbrella. Statistic only talks about the sample, the smaller piece that's underneath that larger umbrella. So here's a scenario here. At the end of its first year of business, a movie theater collects data on its concession stand operations. The average amount spent at concessions by a moviegoer was $8.14. Now, this $8.14 talks about not just one specific type of person that came to the actual movie theaters. It talks about all moviegoers, right? I'm not talking about a specific piece of moviegoers. So since it talks about all moviegoers, that is the population. So all moviegoers is my population. So because this $8.15 is talking about all of my populations, this is this value of $8.14 is a, so it's my value, it is a parameter. Now, note the difference here in the next part, which is a statistic. So, here's my scenario. High school has three different lunch periods. In a randomly selected lunch period, 24% of students brought lunch from home. So, my whole population is all of the high school students. Now, I'm talking about 24% of students that were randomly selected from one lunch period. So, one lunch period is a sample. Should 
should put really a one here. Okay, because I'm talking about one lunch period of the population, 24% of students is talking about the sample. So because I'm talking about the sample, this is not a parameter, this is considered a statistic. Okay, so you have to be really careful about talking about what a population is, what a sample is, what a parameter, and what a statistic are. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, people use um, population and uh, probably statistic most often, but people don't use them in the correct way. So when we're talking about certain situations, we want to make sure that we, when we talk about populations, we talk about a parameter, and when we talk about samples, we talk about a statistic. Okay. So now we're going to go through some examples, and we're going to determine if the variables are categorical data or if they're quantitative data, then we're gonna give an example of it. So, number one, social media followers. I'm talking about how many social media followers do I have? So I'm talking about how many, that would be quantitative. And so the example of that would be something like Mr. Masso has, I don't know, 610 Instagram followers. Right, that's a number, it's how many I have, so it is quantitative. If I'm talking about social media itself, that's talking about different types of social media, that is categorical data, right? Because an example of social media could be Instagram, it could be TikTok, it could be Facebook, whatever, right? So those are categories, so this is categorical data. Color, what is your favorite color? Ah, that's categorical again. Maybe your favorite color is black. Maybe it's pink. Whatever, those are categories, so that's categorical data. Gender, what gender do you identify as? That would be considered, again, categorical, right? Are you male? Are you female? Are you non-binary? Etc. Etc. Right? That would be considered categories. So that's categorical data. Salary. What's the average salary of a teacher? What's the average salary of a marketer? I'm talking about money. It's quantifying something. So this is a um, quantitative data. So like if I make forty thousand or a hundred twenty thousand, right? Okay, categorical data, or excuse me, quantitative data. Height, what's your average height of a 15 year old? That is quantitative, right? Because I could say I'm five feet six inches. I could say I'm 72 inches, right? That is numbers we're talking about, quantities. Average GPA, again, that would be quantitative, right? Is your GPA a really great 3.2? Or is it a really bad 1.2, right? Hopefully it's not that one. But again, that's talking about numbers. We're talking about quantities, how much of something there is, quantitative data. Um, what language do you speak? That would be considered categorical, right? Do you speak English? Do you speak Spanish? Right, those are categories and so on. Okay, so again, categorical data. Which country are you from? That would be categorical again, right? Are you from the USA? Are you from Greece? Whatever, right? Different categories, so that is categorical data. What is your age? How old is the average ninth grader, right? That is quantitative, right? You could be 16 years old, you could be 18, whatever and so on. Family size, how many people do you have in your family, right? What's the average number of people? Again, that's gonna be quantitative. Are there four of you or are there seven of you, like in my family, right? How many are there? Last one, zip code. Hmm, now I'm talking about numbers, but zip code really tells me where does a person live? Those are different categories. So this one's actually categorical data. 
Do you live in 33771 over in Largo or do you live in Tampa? Right? So, caution, be careful. Sometimes numerical attributes, sometimes numbers, are categorical data. So sometimes numerical attributes are categorical. Right, and here's a way to think about it. Would you ever take zip codes? Does it really make sense to like add, subtract, multiply, and divide zip codes? That doesn't really make any sense, right? What do you really do with that? So because I'm not, I can't add, subtract, multiply, or divide these zip codes, that means it's categorical data, right? You also can't add, subtract, multiply, or divide like what language do you speak? That doesn't make any sense, okay? So sometimes numerical attributes are categorical, so you have to be really careful um, about determining what kind of data it is before you get going. Okay, now, there are different ways that we can represent categorical and or quantitative data. So if you are talking about categorical data, so this means in different categories, I'm not talking about numbers, there are about five different ways that you can represent the data that you have. So if you were to go out there and you would ask people, okay, what is the language that you speak at home? I could display that information based on how many people I asked in one of five different ways. The first way you can do it is called a frequency table. A frequency table displays the count of categories in a table, right? So how many do you have of each? A relative frequency table displays the percent of categories in a table. So while this one could be like a one out of 10 people speak Spanish, this one would say 10% of people speak Spanish. A bar graph shows the distribution of categorical variables, like an individual bar in a graph. It uses frequency of the categories on the Y axis. A relative frequency bar graph shows the distribution of categorical variables, um, and it uses relative frequency on the Y axis. So I'll show you, so these are tables, these are graphs, those are two different things. Last one is a pie chart, so the one you're most familiar with. A pie chart just shows the distribution of categorical variables, like a pie with slices being a category. We use relative frequency, so the sum of the categories should always add up to be 100%. So I'm gonna show you some examples, and we're going to determine what each type of representation is. So, <clears throat> excuse me. A sample of 20 people were asked, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry? We are going to label each type of representation. So over here, these are both tables, right? These are both graphs. This one's probably the easiest one, right? I've got slices that show percent, and if I were to add all of my percents together, 35 and 15, I should get 100%. So this one right here is a pie chart. Easy enough, right? Simple, simple. Now, favorite ice cream flavor over here, I've got 10 people that say vanilla, seven people that say chocolate, and three people that say strawberry. This is telling me how many of each one um, voted for each one, so that's telling me the count of categories in the table. So because it's a count, this is a frequency table. Ooh, listen to that. Okay, in this next table over here, instead of me saying 10 out of the 20 people, I'm saying 50%. 35%, 15%, because I'm talking about percent of people instead of count of people, this is a relative frequency table.
which should now make my graphs really simple. If I'm looking at my graphs and I am given the count for each one, this would be considered a frequency graph, which is just a regular bar graph. If I'm given it with percentages, right, or instead of maybe percentages, I'm given it as decimals, this is telling you what percent of people enjoyed vanilla. This is a relative frequency graph. Okay, so they are called different things, so you have to make sure that as you're going through and when you're referring to each, you refer to them each correctly. Okay, next type are quantitative variables, right? So this is talking about numbers. There's really only three ways that we represent quantitative variables. One way is a dot plot. So a dot plot, each value in a data set is shown as a dot and then it's graphed on a number line, okay? A stem plot, in this representation, each value in a data set is shown numerically with a stem and a leaf and it's really great, it should say ideal, not idea. It's ideal for small data sets. We don't use a stem plot for a lot, a lot of um, different uh, data that we get. So if you're getting, you know, 50, 60, 100, 200, 300, stem plot is not a great choice for you. Stem plot is more of like a 20 range. Um, a histogram, each value in a data set is grouped within a class, making a bar, and then each class is graphed side by side to make a histogram. It is ideal for large data sets. Okay. So if I look down at the representations below, this first one right here, I've got some small data here. The key says if I have a six with a line and then a zero, that really means 60 goals. So goalie kicks, I've got 60, I've got 70, I have 77, 80, 82, 83, and so on. This is called the stem. This is called the leaf. So this is a stem plot. Next one is quiz grades here. So what you can see on the x-axis here is for the grades that are given. This is considered a class. So in the cl this first class over here from 50 to 59, we've got one student that ended up in this range. In the 60 to 69, we've got two students that ended in this range, so on and so forth, because I've got these classes or these ranges at the bottom and number of people as my y-axis, this right here is called a histogram. And my last one, as I'm sure you can probably tell, um, each value in my data set here is shown as a dot, so I have one person who says that their household size is just one. I have one, two people that say their household is two. I have three people that say their household is three, and so on and so forth. This is a dot plot. Okay, so we never use one of these three for a qualitative, or excuse me, a categorical data and we never use the categorical data here for quantitative. We really try to keep those balanced um, and make sure that we only use the correct one for the correct data sets. Okay, last part we're gonna do now. So we're gonna come together, we're gonna do a couple practice problems, just understanding this vocabulary, making sure we know what each thing is, and then you guys will have an opportunity to get your homework done. Okay, so question one. Are the following questions statistical questions? So remember, a statistical question is something that can be answered by collecting many pieces of information or data and then analyzing and summarizing that data. So first one says, what is the tallest building in Chicago, Illinois? Well, that only has one answer. Because it only has one answer, it is not a statistical question. because we only have one answer, right? It has one answer. Okay, letter B. 
What is the most popular store in the Clearwater Mall among teenagers? Well, I am expecting multiple responses. So because I've got multiple responses, I'm gonna to have to collect the data and then answer the question. So this is, I'll just put yes. This is a statistical question and it is because, so yes for letter B, I'm sorry about that. Um, this is a statistical question because we are expecting multiple responses to this question. Letter C, during which month did your family take a vacation? Well, we're only expecting one answer there. So because of that, this is not a statistical question, right? There's only one answer to that. Okay, number two. What is the statistical variable represented in the following question, and is it categorical or quantitative? How many TV sets are owned by families? So my statistical variable there, okay, the thing that I'm trying to find out about is how many TV sets are owned. So I want to know how many, I'm trying to find the number of TV sets. Because I'm talking about the number of, and I'm not talking about like what kind is it or what, you know, where did you get them from? I'm saying how many do you have? That is a quantitative um, variable. Okay, quantitative, right? Because I'm talking about a number. How many do I have? Okay, number three. 44 randomly selected members of the Largo High School Band were asked to report the number of hours they spend practicing each week. If you were to compute the mean number of hours, would your answer be a parameter or a statistic? Okay, so first thing you have to decide is what is my population? So my population includes everybody in the whole section that I'm talking about here. So I am talking only to the Largo High School band members. So that would be all members of the Largo High School band. That is my population. Now, I'm trying to compute the mean number of hours, but I am not asking all of the members of the Largo High School band. I'm only asking 44 randomly selected members. So because there are 44 selected members, that is a sample. Okay, so my sample is the 44 randomly selected. Now, I am trying to find the mean number of hours. So I am talking about a sample. Because I'm talking about a sample, I am talking about a statistic, okay? Because a statistic, I'm talking about the number of hours of the sample. So it describes the sample. Because it's describing the sample, it is a statistic and not a parameter. Number four. Ms. Damaso wants to know which chapter her students liked best this semester. So she randomly selects eight students from each of her six classes to participate in a survey. What is the sample in this situation and what is the population? So population is everybody. So Ms. Damaso is talking to all of her students in her six classes, right? So her full population would be all of Ms. Damaso's students that are in her six classes. Okay, those are, that's the population. So it's the big umbrella. The sample is the smaller section of people that I'm actually talking to. So I am randomly selecting eight students from each of my classes. So my sample is going to be the group, right? Because it's all of them. The sample is the grouping of people. So it's the group of eight random students from each class. 
Notice how I am also being very specific when I describe my sample and when I describe my population. I'm not just saying the population is Miss DeMassa's students, right? I'm saying it's Miss DeMassa's students in her six classes. I'm not just saying the sample is a group of eight students. It's the group of eight random students from each class. So I'm being as specific as possible when I go through these. So make sure as you are answering things, you are also being as specific as possible. Okay, last two questions. Mrs. Halleck wants to know what kind of things her students do to prepare for her tests. And just so you guys know, Mrs. Halleck is really Miss Steves. It's just Miss Steves with her married last name. Um, because Miss Masso talked to Miss Steves the other day, and so I wanted to write a question about her. So, shout out to Miss Steves. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Mrs. Halleck wants to know what kind of things her students should prepare for her tests. Mrs. Halleck placed the names of her students into a box. To determine who she would ask about their study habits, she asked a student to draw names from the box. What is the sample in this situation, and what is the population? So... Population would be all of Mrs. Halleck's students, right? All of them. We don't know um, how many classes she has. Oops. Because it doesn't tell that us in this scenario, but I can just say all of Mrs. Halleck's students, that is good enough for this part for the population. The sample is the smaller group of students that I'm actually asking the question to. So my sample would be whatever, whatever names are drawn from the box. So it's not just the names, but it is the group of students whose names were drawn from the box. Again, look at how incredibly specific I am being with my sample and with my population. That is really key here. All right, last question. For each one of these four, we're going to use one of the words that we've earlier defined, and we're going to write um, which one of these would be each one. So if I have a set of 16 people, out of an entire restaurant, well, the entire restaurant would be my population. This small grouping of 16 people out of that whole thing would be considered the sample. Okay, next one. The average age of all pets at a shelter is a blank. So either it's a parameter, statistic, or some kind of variable. Well, I'm talking about average age. And age is talking about number. So because I'm talking about number, this is a quantitative variable. So we'll cross that one off. Okay, next one. Temperature in degrees Celsius is a blank. So it's either categorical variable, which it's not, right? Because temperature is talking about numbers, so it's being quantitative, okay? So either it's a parameter or it's a statistic. Now, we have to think about this one really hard. The overall kind of population or thing I would be talking about here is degrees, right? Now there are two different types of degrees. There's Celsius and there's Fahrenheit, right? Fahrenheit's what we use, Celsius is literally what the rest of the world uses. But those two are small samples of a larger population. Because I am describing a sample, it would be a statistic. And so I'm describing a sample. Okay, so that one's not a parameter, but it's a statistic. So you gotta think really hard about that one. Last one, 
Type of car is a blank. Well, it's a variable, right? It can range from, you know, if you're a really great person like Mr. Masso, you drive a Prius, but you know, if you're somebody else, you drive something else. Um, so type of car would be considered a variable and because it's a type, that would be categorical. And we are finished with our first notes. So we just kind of went through, we talked a little bit about um, all these different types of variables as well as um, populations and statistics. And so now it is your time to go back to the Edmodo assignment and you're going to finish the week one video one homework just to make sure that you understand all of these new definitions for all of these words here, okay? Um, so you will make sure to complete and then submit your work into the Ed, excuse me, the Edmodo assignment. Do not submit it through Teams. Do not try to send me a message. Please be very careful that you're looking at due dates because um, a lot of people are having issues trying to submit things past the due date and everything does kind of close off um, at the specific time listed. So please make sure you are submitting your things early enough on. Um, thanks so much for listening and have a really grand day.